So how do you become a backend developer in 2022? Well, let's dive into that topic. So I'm Israel, for those of you that are new to the channel, I've been working professionally as a developer since 2017. I worked for a smaller private consulting firm and I currently work for a much bigger company, but still as a software developer. At the first company being much smaller, I did everything. I was basically full stack, but at my current job, I stick a lot closer to being a full-time backend developer, but from time to time, I can hop on and help out. But with that being said, I want to give you guys my tips on what I believe you guys need to do if you guys want to become backend developers yourselves. Let's begin with a little overview for those of you that maybe don't know exactly what a backend developer is. So a backend developer is a developer that does not concern themselves with any of the user interface or handling anything that the user directly interacts with. Backend developers build and maintain the code that processes data and they perform actions that come in from the client side. They are more focused on data storage, security, and mainly creating the services that processes the user input and also they interact with the database so what are the best programming languages for backend developer roles let's dive into this so i'm going to base some of this stuff off the stack overflow 2021 developer survey the link's going to be in the description but that's where i'm going to base some of my opinions but i also have my own opinions that are kind of stuck in the middle of this so let's get to the list and number one, we're going to have JavaScript. In the latest Stack Overflow dev survey, 2021, like I mentioned, JavaScript was the most popular language out there, and it's easy to see why. It's extremely useful when it comes to front-end and back-end development with many language and frameworks that also derive from it. Node.js and Express are the main uses of JavaScript when it comes to back-end development, and it comes with a lot of really cool features, a massive community, and it interacts perfectly with almost every client-side application. Number two, we're gonna have Java. Java is a veteran in the game. It's a staple when it comes to backend development and it continues to have massive support. And there are massive systems out there at huge companies with projects that are still in Java. Java code can be run on any platform and it comes with many cool features to be expected of a object oriented language. And then number three is gonna be kind of, it's Sun, the child uh, built to kind of mimic Java from the Microsoft side, that is C-sharp. C-sharp is one of the most widely used languages as well for creating backend systems. It's increasingly getting faster with a lot of new features always being cranked out. It's also cross-platform and all in all, a language that continues to grow in popularity and it's personally my favorite that I use professionally and on my off time. Also is an object-oriented language, so it has a lot of those amazing benefits. And finally, the last one I'm gonna explain a little bit longer is gonna be Python. Python's quick and easy to learn, has a ton of libraries that you can use to cut development time in half. It's extremely popular and loved and is very versatile. You cannot go wrong with using Python for literally any single application of any sort when it comes to the tech industry. And just for fun, I'll throw in Ruby and PHP as other options. An important thing that I will mention to any developer, new or old, that hops into the workforce is that they need to know Git. Whether it's Git command line, or you're using one of the many Git GUIs out there, my personal favorite being Git Kraken. So if Git Kraken, you're watching this, you should sponsor me, you know, call me. But with that being said, I will be in the future making some Git related content. So if you don't want to miss any of that or are finding this current video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you guys dropped a like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the future content. But returning to Git, it's extremely important tool for being able to keep the main project code organized and controlling the versioning. And it's key, especially with working in big teams on big projects to keep everyone in line and to keep code from kind of tangling up and breaking things in like that master branch. So it's very important. So really dive in, learn that and it's especially important for newcomers to jump in and be able to contribute without being scared of breaking things when it comes to Git. So definitely dive into that and get some good hands-on experience. Next up, as a backend developer, you do need to know the types of database that you could be interacting with. These are going to be relational and then we're going to have non-relational databases. Relational databases store their data in tables and rows using primary keys to access certain records in a table. You can create connections between tables by using foreign keys to link the records in another table to another table when querying for information. These types of DBs are accurate and consistent since the data always has to conform to the table design or constraints. Some examples of these could be SQL, Oracle, or Postgres. Non-relational databases have no keys or tables or rows. Instead, the data is stored very plainly. A lot of the times, exactly how the client kind of passes the information all the way through your API or whatever backend application you have. 
So the key to this is you usually just have a sort of key that points to a large amount of data being stored or arranged however it wants to be. These databases are good when you have a lot of information that may not be consistent and it could be hard to kind of build rules around, build tables like you would in a relational database. So they end up being very flexible and they're very easy to work with the client side since you can kind of just store everything because you can just retrieve it with a key. And some examples of these databases are MongoDB, Apache Cassandra, and Couchbase. Your best bet for being able to learn fast is going to just dive in, start a free YouTube course or Udemy course, or even just pick some type of idea that comes to you. Build a simple CRUD API in whatever language you want and hook it up to a database, whatever one you want, and fight through whatever roadblocks you run into. The only way to really build those skills up is to practice and work on real world projects. Tutorials are great for getting that base, for getting those fundamentals, for understanding kind of just the basic things of a language. But as a developer, the real skill is that when you're presented with obstacles, you understand what you're capable of in your given language, in your giving framework, whatever it may be, and then being able to use your best friend Google to find maybe the appropriate syntax to solve your problem. The real skill is problem solving. But if you have a good base of understanding of the language, you're going to kind of know how to approach the situation, but you won't be able to build that. And actually that is the key moment where languages and frameworks that start sinking in when you have to solve those hard real world situations that you're going to run into when you get stuck and you're not just copying and pasting tutorials. So that's what you have to do to train and practice and practice and practice. Just like every other skill, the more you practice, fight through those roadblocks and really experience what it is like to build a real world style application, the better it's gonna be for you as a developer, as well as those projects are gonna look a lot better on your resume. And while we're talking about resumes and jobs, let's move into that for a little bit. Now let's kind of dive into looking for a job and how do we get it? Well, when you're looking for backend developer roles, focus on the skills that you know or have been practicing and try and filter by those jobs if you can. And then here's where the big hack comes into play. If you see a role that you're interested in, and let's say it asks for C Sharp and NoSQL databases, but you don't really know NoSQL, then as you're applying or before you apply, take some time to kind of get to learn it. You want to put some time in, maybe work a little mini project, just something so that you can say confidently, like I've worked in this, and then you can continue growing in that skill as you're applying for this position. It's an easy way to know exactly what companies are looking for. And you can look at yourself and be like, I don't know this. This is what companies are looking for. That's a valuable skill to learn. And then you can start looking into that. And then once you have these skills, delete everything on your resume that has nothing to do with the specific skills that job is asking for. If a job is looking for C sharp, they do not care if you know Microsoft Word. They want to know big and bold and in the middle what they want and they want to see it and you want to catch their attention. The hiring manager sometimes only has a few seconds to look over resumes. So you want to make sure that they see exactly. Boom. He knows that skill. Boom. They know that skill. Boom. Look at that project. They did exactly this already in a project. Wow. That's a good prospect. So that's kind of how you want to build your resume and you want to make sure to highlight the important things and you want to make sure that when the hiring manager looks at your resume, you make it count. But I'm hoping that these tips get you guys well on your way to becoming backend developers. And if you guys are interested in C Sharp, well, I have this tutorial right here to get you guys started with building a .NET 6 CRUD API.